Hi, my name is Chris. Welcome to the Beam Corner channel. Today's main topic will not be a grasshopper, tricks as usual. In this video, I will focus on software that is the mother of grasshopper, Rhinosaurs. It's true that you don't need to be a super user of Rhino to make a good script, but some knowledge of the program can really helpful. Moreover, mastering some tricks can save you a lot of time and nerves. Enjoy the first part. Let's start with the first one, named views. Everybody knows how view in Rhino works. You need to activate the window to work on a specific view. Every time when I work in Rhino together with Grasshopper, I don't use front view and right view. Personally, I recommend closing them to have a better overview of your top view and perspective view. Just right click on the view and click close viewport. When I would like to have extra views, I create them by myself. Just go to View, Viewport Layout, New Viewport. In order to create your personal views, check out if you have turned on panel called Named Views. You can do that in Options on your toolbox to the right or at the top in Panels. Now we can zoom to our objects and change view from top to perspective to have a 3D view. If your view is set up now, you can go to the window on the right side called Named Views and save view as your viewport. Now, if you zoom out and want to come back to the previous view, you can do that just by one click. Usually I like to have two standard views, one from the top and one from the perspective, and some details which I work with. In addition to that, when you work with several screens, you can grab your whole view and move it to another screen. In order to do that, just catch your view and move it outside your view window. View will change to transparent, and now you can place it in another screen without any additional toolboxes, just pure view. Let's go to next one. Zoom selected. How does it work? Select your element in Rhino and write a comment. Zoom selected. Just two letters, Z and S, or click on the toolbox icon. In many cases, zoom selected function saved my S. Look at the example. It's easy in Rhino to lose your geometry in view. Too much zoom out or bad rotation can provide an empty view. In this case, zoom selected works perfectly. Let's go to an example. Select an object to zoom in another view and go to your empty window while holding shift or control. This way, your object will be still selected while the empty view is active. And now, write your comment Z and S, boom geometry came back. Alright, but what if it's not possible to select any object on any of your views? Use layers then. Go to the layer panel, click selected objects. While layers are selected, write comment Z, S and A. Zoom selected in all views. And you will get all your geometry back. Let's stay with the zoom function, but now we go to the grasshopper. Again, we have a situation when the viewport is empty. But it will be different from the previous example because our objects are not visible in Rhino because they are not baked and you cannot select them by layers. Click the middle mouse button and option wheel will appear. Afterwards, choose magnifying glass to zoom into a grasshopper object. And now my favorite one, Geometry Pipeline. How many times have you lost your referred geometry in Rhino to a grasshopper? Every time when you would like to update your DVG file, you need to do a referring job manually. For example, when you update the road line in your project after some modifications, every time you have to right click on the curve primitive component and click set on curve. A thankless job, especially with many objects in Rhino. But I have good news, there is a built-in grasshopper solution to help you with that. If you haven't heard and used the geometry pipeline component, you should start doing it right now. You can find it under param, ribbon and geometry. The geometry pipeline is a link to an open Rhino model which lets you to auto-reference any geometry. 
It transfers your geometry into Grasshopper based on the type, point, curve, b-wrap and meshes. Moreover, it's possible to filter geometry based on the names of the objects and the layers names. And you can do that even with hidden or locked objects. As a default on the layer and name, asterisk is set up. That means that absolutely every object that name and layer will be piped through components. In other words, you can automatically select all points or curves that exist in the Rhino file. Let's go into an example. If you would like to filter one specific layer, just type the whole name of the layer into the component. Note that the notation for the filter are case sensitive, so it's important to write exactly names with small or big letters. Okay, but what if we need all layers that start with the road line, for example? Nothing hard. Just put an asterisk after your main name part and component with filter rest for you. Furthermore, you can be more specific and use after your main text a question mark to specify any single character in this place or a hashtag to grab your digits. As an example shows, command road line paste hashtag, filter just layers road line 1 and road line 2. Whole list with regular expression how to use them in geometry pipeline you can find in the link below. Ctrl plus M. I don't know why, but as a default in Grasshopper, Mesh Preview is turned off. Thus only baking geometry into Rhino shows me how my mesh looks like and how the vision is set up. There is one super easy solution for that. Go to Display at the top toolbar in Grasshopper and click on Preview Mesh Edges. You can also use shortcut Ctrl plus M. In this way, all your mesh edges will be visible on your Rhino Preview. Did you know all these tricks before? If not, leave like under the video and write in the comment below which you liked most. To be updated and to learn all the secrets of Grasshopper, join our community. It's easy. Go to learngrasshopper.com, click the join button, write your email address and click the confirmation link in the email you will get from me. You will be getting all the latest videos, learning materials and interesting links about Grasshopper directly to your inbox. That's all for today. Thanks for watching, see you next time, have a good one.